Hello, everyone. Blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, welcome you too. You know, we're back, Brother Odane, my wife, Sister Keisha. We're ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, we're here to just share the truth, to preach the truth, as we're we're um a part of Restores of Truth Ministries, you know, and that's what we're about, just giving the truth, the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, not watering down anything. So we're back with another teaching. We just want to thank all our subscribers. Um, those who have really been, you know, subscribing to this YouTube channel, sharing the videos, liking as well. You know, the, the channel has been growing. The ministry has been growing. And we thank you for your support. You know, we couldn't do it without you, you know, because we know that God is actually causing the increase. The Bible tells us, you know, Paul planted Apollo's water, but God gives the increase. So even though we're planting and we're watering, my wife and I, mm -hmm. it's God that's given it to grow. So I thank you all for subscribing. So. Before we, we, we begin, those who haven't subscribed, please definitely hit that subscribe button, subscribe to this channel, like and share this video because we're back to bring you another topic that's equally important, you know. And one of my favorites. Yes, yes. <laughs> one of my wife's favorite, you know. And today the topic is basically about the importance of being set apart. Oh, yes. All right. Being set apart. It's it's what God has done to his people, he, you know, he sanctifies them, all right? It, it, it means be set apart, all right? The the Greek word, if I believe, um, for us to be sanctified, if I'm not mistaken, or to be holy, is hagios, right? Yes, holy, it's hagios, and it means to be set apart, all right? So first things first, what does that actually mean to be set apart, you see? And what it means is, is basically, is when God chooses you, right? He selects you and he basically, quote unquote, sets you apart from the world. You're called out from the world, all right? You're no longer of this world, even though you're in it, all right? What happens to a person is that when God begins to purify them, their hearts change their hearts. Many things that they used to love in this world that they used to engage in, that they used to delight in. They come to find out that they lose the interest for these things, all right? If you if, if you come to Christ and this is happening to you, congratulations, because it shows that God is purifying your heart, all right? And you begin to lose the desire for those things which you used to love, all right? And those things of God, which you never used to have interest in, you begin to develop interest. You begin to have a strong desire for them. And because it's God himself that's putting these desires in you, for his special purpose. All right. We're going to read a, a verse that's um popular. People like to read it in Jeremiah. All right. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And I'm basically going to be coming from Jeremiah 1.5. 1, 1.5. 5. You want to give the definition? Yes, yes. Um I'm going to um share this real quick. Jeremiah 1.5. Okay. All right, so Jeremiah 1 5, if you all see this screen, it reads, Before I form you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, I ordained you a prophet of the nations. Now, this term, if you look at the footnote, sanctify you means set you apart. All right. In Jeremiah's case, he was set apart from the womb. A matter of fact, there are people who are born in this world who God has set apart from the womb. You know, how do you identify if you have been set apart from the womb? That's a that's a whole different teaching that we're not really going to get into today. But Jeremiah was set apart from the womb. All right. But it means that Jeremiah was chosen for a special special purpose of God. And what was that? He ordained him as a prophet to the nations. OK. To be the voice of God. Basically, that's what a prophet is prophet you know a prophetic gift is a gift from god and he set apart him to be a prophet to the nations that means you know the voice you know of god or proclaiming you know god's whatever it is a warning whatever it is you know if god chooses you to do something you know you have to adhere to that call and it's for a purpose yes yes you know when god chooses you, you mentioned a good point when he chooses you you have to heed to that calling you know because we don't want to be like Jonah and run from our calling because that won't be pretty. Mm -hmm. 
those are not pretty pretty mm -hmm. consequences all right now the bible uses the term peculiar people right and we're going to actually share that in um the book of um the epistle of second peter want to read yeah but ye are chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light now if you all see that it says a peculiar people yes all right so what does that mean what what is it a peculiar people all right peculiar people refers to a chosen special or set apart people who belong to god this term appears in several different contexts in the bible both in old and new testaments the concept of being a peculiar people challenges believers to live a life that reflects god's character and purposes the phrase peculiar people in first peter 2 9 is derived from the latin peculium and denotes a special possession or property all right basically in short terms being set apart mm -hmm. all right you're a new creature in christ all right so we can't live as we used to live you know we can't engage in certain things that we used to used to engage in you know I remember when God, you know, when he had called me and he started changing my perspective on things, right? There's certain things I used to love. All right, there's, you know, certain holidays I used to partake in, you know, whether it's Christmas, Easter, all right, that's a whole different teaching. I no longer partake, in it, partake of it anymore. You know, I'm, I'm fully set apart for God's purpose, you know? You know, I used to like, you know, going to clubs and stuff, you know, partying, hanging with certain worldly friends, but I don't I don't like that stuff no more. Your desires no, change. Your desires change. I have no more interest in that, you know? And before God can use you to the level that he wants to use you, there's certain things you have to get rid of out of your life. Certain friends you have to cut off. And sad to say, certain family members you got to let go. Yeah. You know? Because they're not going to be able to relate to you anyway. Once you start um, following God and really um, taking your walk seriously, um, they're not going to be able to relate to you. Certain topics um, that, you know, fam family or people may want to partake in, uh, you know, that's worldly, carnal, you're not going to have the desire to partake in any more activities. Um, if they invite you somewhere and you know there's going to be a lot of uh, worldly things going on, you know, sinful things that may cause you to stumble, you're no longer going to have the desire to partake in those things. Yeah. Being set apart is a mindset, you know, um, as it says in Romans 12 too, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, meaning that you no longer have a carnal worldly mind you no longer have those desires as well you have you desire what god you know wants for you you following god's plan in order for your life not the plans of the world yes yes so like, like you said that mm -hmm. you know about romans you know be no longer conformed to the to the ways of this world be changed you know the renewing of your mind you know and it also says you know, offer your body as a living sacrifice you mm -hmm. know it your, your mind has to be renewed you when your mind becomes renewed you begin to see, see things, things how different. god sees things you know you, be, you begin to see what's actually going on in this world you can see through all the lies of the media you know through all the deception all the delusions you see what's really going on what's what's maybe happening behind the scenes you know and not only this right when you're actually set apart from this world right a lot of things that happens in this world you know whether it's um being a the system being affected financially different diseases or pandemics that's happening on this world God keeps you from all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, he will keep you and preserve you from all that stuff because even though you're in this world, spiritually, you're not of this world. Mm -hmm. you, you're not really here spiritually, even though you're here physically. You know, your soul is, is what is that? We're, um, we're in heavenly places, places right. with Christ Jesus. We're, we're in spiritually, you're in heavenly places, even though physically your body is still here. So what happens to this world on this earth you know, because things that happen in the, in the spirit first before it happens in the natural. So what is what happens here in this earth? You know, it, it passes over you. You know, it doesn't affect you because you're kept safe in Christ Jesus. That, yeah. That's why it's important, you know, to not get caught up in, in the things of this world. Can I read the scripture? Yeah. Um, Philippians 3.20, it says, but our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. who will transform our lowly body to be his glorious body. Yes. At some point, what you said. Yes. We're, we're, this is not our final destination, this world. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, a heavenly home to look forward to. Our, we should be kingdom minded. And that's also ties into being set apart, taking a narrow path, all that good stuff. You mm -hmm. know, you, you, you're, 
the things of this world don't affect you, you know, the um, economic collapse, all these things, you know, catastrophic things going on around the world really doesn't move you. We know already these are things that are prophesied already. Yeah. So really what it is, is that, you know, we're getting closer. Our redemption is drawing. Right. Yeah, that's right. How did, let's look at life of Paul. All right, I'm going to read from Galatians 2, verse 20. Now, everybody look at, listen to this, right? It reads, right? Paul says, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, you know, put to death with him. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul no longer lives for himself no more. All right. That's how we should live. No longer living for ourselves. All right. This is this is one of the characters of being set apart. You're not living for this world anymore. You're living to please your heavenly father. You're living to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. All right. I want everybody to um. let's read um, Corinthians. This is also going to tie into it. Right. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Clear as day. You know, now that we come to Christ, we're no longer supposed to live for ourselves no more. The Bible says we've been bought at a price. All right. So examine yourself. Who are you living for? Who are you really living for? You know, are you really set apart? You know, are you are you really consecrated to the lord god for his purposes all right are, are you still holding on to things which you're not supposed to hold on to are you still holding on to friends or family you know that the lord has told you to let go all right what is it you're holding on to what is what is what is holding you back because unless you let these things go you're not going to be able to fulfill your purpose in christ all right and now i just want to clear up something now, we know that, you know, you, you have a calling on your life and that you may have to minister to certain individuals. We're not talking about that. Yeah. We're not saying have your nose tooted up in the air or be self-righteous to think you're better than people. Yes. However, that does not mean that you have to break bread with everybody. You do what you have to do as far as like what God called you to do for that group of people or that person, whatever. And then you move on. Even in certain um, circles as believers, you know, it's not called for us to break bread with everybody for a reason. It depends on whatever your call and purpose is, what God called you to do, or we purpose or will for you to do. So we understand that, you know, certain family members God may have called you to minister to, and they may live a different life from you. Fine. Just know that that's God willing that, you know, um, orchestrating that, you know, you minister to that person. However, if it's family members that are trying to pull you back into certain lifestyles and things, you know, that is not of God. You That's need to right. be separated from that. Um, so we just saying like use wisdom. We're not saying to act self-righteous mm -hmm. or like you better. We know that we have a job to do in this world while we're still here. However, that does not mean you have to go out with certain friends, you know, their lifestyle, family members, whatever it is, uh, go out to eat with coworkers or sit around gossip and all that stuff. Yeah. Just stay to what God is calling you to do. You know, if it's not, you minister to a certain group of people that, you know, be, be separate, be set apart. Don't yes. try to blend in and mix with everybody. Mm -hmm. That's right. Listen, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, man, the Holy Spirit, you know, is going to set you apart. You, mm -hmm. you just, you just not going to fit in. Right. Exactly. You, you, things are just going to be off. You know, you mm -hmm. may go certain places and you may just feel off me, but yeah. just like, man, why is it? I feel like I don't belong here. Yeah. You know, that's, that, that's a key sign that you're different, that you, that you stand out. All right. I want to, I want to just um read the story about the widow's oil and Elisha, right? I'm going to, um I'm going to show you something real quick because this, this story is deep. When you actually look at it from a some symbolic level, a spiritual level of what is actually going on, all right? We read this story, we may have heard of this story, and we, we may have um, looked at it naturally speaking, but there's something symbolic about this, all right? So I'm coming from 2 Corinthians chapter, sex, sorry, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Now, I just want everybody just to pay attention now. I'm going to point out something, excuse me, for you all. Now it says, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? 
And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. All right. Now pay attention. As I said, pay attention to the symbols. All right. We all know what oil represents in the Bible. All right. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. <laughs> all right. Just pay attention. Set aside the full ones. Amen. All right. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who bought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said to her, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Now this is symbolic, all right? If, you, if, if, you, if you're staying, sticking with us, just stick with this, all right? This is symbolic of what God does to his people when he fills them with that oil, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? He, he wants to fill them up to the brim, all right? To the, the fullness, all right? I'm getting somewhere, right? They're set aside. They're set apart from everything else, all right? Why? For a specific purpose, to be used for a purpose, all right? Now, if we think about this, right? Elijah told her, no, go sell that oil, the, the, the oil in the vessel, go go get, go get, sell it, right? So that way, you know, she can pay off her debts. <laughs> Just pay attention to this, all right? The people who are set apart, filled with the Holy Spirit, right? God sends them out to help people pay, um, be free from their debt. Yes. What am I saying? Their sins, by preaching the gospel of Christ so they can be free from their sins. Sin is spiritual debt, yes. all right? All right? When you preach That's the gospel good. of Jesus Christ, people accept Jesus Christ um, um, they accept and believe on him, get baptized for the mission of their sin. They get freed from their debt, who are done by the vessels who are set apart, filled with that oil, that Holy Spirit. All right, this is symbolic. And she filled many of uh, the vessels, yes. but the ones that were willing to be filled, yes, God says, set them apart. Yes, and you have to be willing to be filled. With the, you have to want the Holy Spirit. Yes, and the, yeah, definitely. And and, and and man, there's a lot of deep sign that I'm really not gonna really get into, but we gotta pay attention. It yeah. says when when those vessels were filled, and she asked her son, um, bring me another vessel. The son the son said, there's no more vessels. It says the oil stopped. Stop. All right, we're not gonna get into all that, but I'm but I'm telling you, right? The Bible tells us seek the Lord while he may be found. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> and there's gonna come a time that one may cease, man. Yeah. <laughs> there's gonna come a time where that door is gonna close. All right. All right. In certain situations, the anointing is not flowing. Yes, all right. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, so now is the time. But the point what I'm saying is how God does this, all right? There's vessels. He desires to fill them up and he sets them aside for a purpose, all right? Go preach that word so people, they can get free from their debts. Once they re receive Jesus Christ, he, Jesus Christ pays their debts, all right? There's not a lot of time left. We see the signs going on. You know, we always emphasize this. That's a powerful scripture, man. Amen, it it's, you know, there's a lot, lot of meat in the Old Testament. How can I share the scripture yeah. while we on it? Yep. Uh, Psalms chapter four, verses three to five. And this is in the King James version it says, but know that the Lord have set apart him that is godly for himself. Mm -hmm. The Lord will hear when I call it to him, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Mm. God sets you apart for his purpose. You know, you're going to hear from God. You All that goodness that comes into being set apart. You know, don't look at it as, oh, I don't fit in. You know, certain people desiring to fit in with certain people. You know, you feel, as the world will say, weird. Yes. When God's called us to be a peculiar people mm -hmm. and be set apart. It's a reason why God is not allowing you to fit in with certain groups of certain people. He wants you to stay on that narrow path. He wants you to live a righteous life, not to be pulled in to the ways of the world, not to seek the counsel of the wicked and, and, and from worldly counsel as well. He don't want you to receive any of that. Yes. He wants to speak to you. He wants to spend time. He wants to commune with you, as it says in Psalms 4.3. You know, so don't look at it as a negative if you don't fit in with certain, even in like ministries or whatever, it's for a purpose. God will draw the people to you who are part of your destiny, who he will for your life. Yes. And I'm glad you brought that up. Let's look at um, 
John, right? Let's 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 read read this. John 15 and 19. All right. If ye were of the world, the world will love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Rejoice when they hate you. Rejoice when they talk about you on your job. Rejoice when certain family members can't stand you. That you're not getting invited to baby showers, cookouts, whatever. You on the right path. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it's a good. Your point. phone stop ringing. Yes. You know. Yes, as you as you yeah. actually draw close to God, you know mm -hmm. God is setting you apart. You know these, these are key signs we want to we want to pay attention mm -hmm. to, right? Before any of this happened, your phone used to ring. You have a lot of friends, right? Mm -hmm. Talking, talking later, about out, nothing. talking about nothing. nothing. When you started building your relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, you're being set apart. Your phone calls start decreasing, right? Your friends, you start losing friends. You, you start feeling a bit, quote unquote, lonely, all right? You feel as if you don't have no friends no more because God is removing certain people from you. For a purpose. See? Right? We just read in John how, you know, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yeah. That's true. If you're a part of this world, the world's going to accept you, you, embrace you. And it's not genuine a lot of times yeah, anyway, not. so. yeah. You know, but when the Lord Jesus Christ chooses you out the world, mm -hmm. what are they gonna like yeah. you? Yeah, you're gonna be weird, you're gonna be strange. Yeah, you're gonna be strange. They can't figure you out. And matter of fact, you know, that light that's in you convicts them convicts of their evil deeds. They're exactly not gonna want to be around you. <laughs> you don't even have to yeah. preach. That's right. They just know it's something yeah. about you. Just your demeanor itself makes them feel mm -hmm. uncomfortable, you know, and it's because that light that's shining in you. You see, th those are key signs, all right, that God has set you apart for, for his own, for a particular purpose, all right? But you have to want to be a vessel that wants to be filled, because mm -hmm. if you're not, you're not going to be set apart, like it, we just read in that yes. uh, scripture. You know, you have to want the Holy Spirit. You have mm -hmm. to want to commune with God and, and be on that narrow path and be set apart by mm -hmm. God. You can't, like I said, um, worldliness and all that stuff that's more of a mindset more than anything just like being set apart is a mindset yes you can't want to you know meddle with everybody and do what they do you know if it's not god's will for your life you know you have to be your heart can't be tied to those things yes yes matter of fact right about, about worldliness the bible tells us in the book of um epistle of james chapter four verse four right mm -hmm. it says ye adulterers and adulteresses Know ye not that friendship with, of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world the is the of enemy of God. Now that itself is a is a is a concept, a principle, right? Because no man can serve two masters. And this system, right, which is Satanized, right? Basically, it's ruled by Satan, filled with wickedness, filled with deceit, lies, all types of deception, you know, it's Satanized. And if you want to go along with this world, it's Satanized system. You're mm -hmm. basically going against God. God. And he used the term adulterers and adulteresses. Why? Because Christ's people are supposed to be married with him. Right. So if they love anything else, go with anything else. You're an adulterer, adulterer. Yeah, you come in spiritual mm -hmm. adultery. Hostile. You know, enmity means hostility against. You know, if you're if you're going to be a friend of this world, you want to fit in. Then you're making yourself an enemy of God. You're you're basically putting yourself outside of God's kingdom. All right, we don't want that. You know, the world doesn't rejects you. I right, rejoice because it hated Jesus too. You know, that's why we have to examine ourselves. Are we truly set apart? Do you see yourself as truly being set apart? All right, do you fit in with this world? Do you do do the world love you? This and that. All right, are you still engaging in certain behaviors, practices? Yeah, and I want to share this. Uh, first John chapter two, verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Do not love the world or the things in the world. So, um, you know, you can't love the things in the world. It's clear right there. Basically, my husband was just saying, you know, you have to be, you know, removed from those things in your heart. Yes, yes. And, and it goes to say in that mm -hmm. chapter, any man loves the world, the love of the Father is it's not, not in him. him. Exactly. The love of God is not in you if you love the world. You know, therefore, if the love of God is in you, you're not going to love this world. You know? And that's a mindset yes. that's trying to get people to think. You, you, your heart is set on the things of this world, like you desire the things of this world instead of the things of God, mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. Your focus is on things of the world, keeping up with celebrity gossip, mm -hmm. going out to clubs and all that yeah. stuff. You know, that yes. stuff shouldn't even interest you. Exactly. And um, the reason why I said this is one of my favorite topics, because me personally, I always felt um, different in different circumstances, uh, family, 
friend circles. Now I've had friends that, you know, um, God destined and will for my life. However, I've never been a person that tries to connect or be um, in every circle and be around everybody because I have the understanding that, you know, some people are just not destined for your life. Some are seasonal and some are just not meant to be. Mm -hmm. So that's how you got to kind of move in life. I'm not telling you how to be, but just let God you know, sit you down and, you know, um, speak to your heart, work on you, you know, develop you, grow you, instead of trying to be busy, like trying to be around all these people. Because if a person, I was telling my husband um, the other day, if a person is not fully surrendered to Christ, expect hurt, expect yes. betrayal, because, yes. you know, if they're not committed to, to God, they're going to hurt you. You're not greater than God. So if they're hurting God by living a sinful life, God loves them. Yes, yeah, just like you can love somebody from a distance. That doesn't mean you have to meddle and do what they do. So if, if they have no problem with um, just living a life, not surrender to God, just, you know, living however they want to live, expect that betrayal, expect that stab in the back, it's, expect if you're dating men that are not really surrendered to Christ, expect him to cheat on you and do all those type of things yes. to, that friend to talk about you because they are not surrendered to God. Yes. yes. They're worldly. Yes. They're worldly. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're worldly. You know, they're worldly. Um, in the Bible, it tells us in first Peter chapter one, verse 15 and 16, uh, I'm just going to read it. But as he, which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, mm -hmm. because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. All right. As I mentioned, um, the Greek word, the word for, you know, holy, I believe is hagios, and that means be set apart, mm -hmm. you know. So that's what we're called to do. You know, we're not called to fit in, but we're called to be set, set apart, apart for a specific task, a specific purpose. Matter of fact, uh, last teaching that we did was about um, vessels of honor, mm -hmm. you know, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And it talks about in 2 Timothy chapter 2 that, you know, there in houses, there's, you know, um, there's clay, there's stone, there's articles for honor, articles for dishonor, you know, vessels for honor, vessels for dishonor. And it says, I'm paraphrasing, if we purge ourselves from that which is dishonorable, we will be a vessel of honor fit for the master's use, ready for every good work, you know? So it goes to show us that certain things, behaviors, or people have to be, you know, removed, that God desires to just purge them out, remove them out from out of our lives so we can really be used for the purpose that God has called us for, you know, that, that we can really be used to the fullness, all right, that God wants us to use us for, you know, we God doesn't want us to be stagnant. He wants us to always grow and bring us to greater heights. All right. Yes. And um, also, um, you know, bring us to greater heights. And, you know, you have to want that. You have to desire those things, you know, what God wants. He's not going to force it on you. You know, you have to, um, like we, we were saying, like, you know, want to be set apart. Not understand like this, this walk can seem lonely. You know, you, you don't you feel like you don't have anybody, whatever, but that's the time that God isolates you for a purpose and a reason. And then at the appointed time, he's going to send the right people into your life or send you out whatever it is around amongst the right people. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. And I wanted to read um uh first Peter yes. chapter two, verse five to nine. All right. It says, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scriptures, it says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe the stone, the belt, the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Okay. Now, we read that in the beginning, but it's showing you in the, um, we read uh, uh, verse nine, mm -hmm. again, yep. but it's showing you that Jesus Christ is our um, chief cornerstone we are stones so um our focus should be coming together as a body taking that narrow path living a righteous holy life laying a stone in zion a holy land 
to be under Jesus Christ, the chief yes. and cornerstone that holds us together. Yes, 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 definitely. You know, not the rocks of the world. Not not the, <laughs> not the rocks of this world. No, not the rocks of yeah. this world. Yeah. So, man, it's it, it's important, man. We God doesn't want us to have in this fit in mentality with this world. This world, it's it's against God's. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, the principles of this world, philosophies of the world, ways of this world. It's, it's against, you know, God's ways. It's against God's principles. And, you know, we're not called to fit in into this world, you know, but we're called to be set apart, to stand out, all right, to be a light. Amen. In the midst of darkness. Yes. And that could be even for, you know, um, professing believers, like we said, is a mindset. If someone is professing Christ and they have a carnal, worldly mindset, mm. you already know what it is. You're trying to grow. You're letting God develop you. You're spending time in prayer, whatever, fasting to get delivered from certain things. And the person um, who is a professing uh, believer, they're just carnal. They're not, you know, they have a worldly mindset. They just lukewarm, whatever, you know, um, don't really keep. Uh, close counsel with a person like that or close connection I want to say yes. with a person like that you know yeah we we ought to walk in love amongst one another but like I said doesn't mean that you have to break bread with everybody or be in close um connection with people yes I'm glad you brought that up um I'm going to read from first Corinthians chapter five right mm -hmm. and I want everybody to pay attention I'm to this too <laughs> because I also want to mention you know being set apart doesn't mean going living in the wilderness. Right. right? It doesn't mean just escaping from yeah, society. Being a hermit or something. Yeah, escaping from society. No. Jesus called us to overcome this world, all right, to overcome and to be a light in this world, to be the salt of the earth, not to just run out in the desert somewhere being like a hermit under a rock. Yeah. You know, no, you know, we have to overcome. All right. So first Corinthians chapter five, starting at verse nine, it says, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people yet i certainly did not mean with the sexual immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters since then you would need to go out of the world mm -hmm. right so so paul is writing to um this church when he said don't keep coming to certain people he's not talking about the people of this world because you'd have to go out, out of this world. world and you can't do what god called you to do exactly. as a minister or exactly. whatever you're calling us we're not called to go out of this world mm -hmm. in some wilderness because we want to escape quote unquote sinners we want to escape when godly people know we're not called to do that right but verse 11 what my wife was saying but now i have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a violer or a drunkard or an extortioner not even to eat with such a person all right for what have i to do with judging those also who are outside do you not judge those who are inside but those who are outside god judges therefore put away the Put away yourselves as an evil person. So as my wife was saying, you can't break bread with everybody. Mm -hmm. People who may be professing to be a Christian, if they're living, you know, ways, simple ways, evil ways that are contrary to God's word, and they're not repenting, you know, you told them whatever, this and that, but they're not repenting, you're not supposed to hang with that person no more. It says don't even break bread with them, you know. Reason being is they'll corrupt you. Exactly. They'll corrupt you, you know, and if you continue to hang with them, you know, people who are professionally believers, you continue to hang with them. You're now living in disobedience. You see? And not only that, their lifestyle could be open doorways for the enemy to afflict you. Whole different topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, it's it's important. It it's important. We have to look at ourselves, all right? Ask yourself, am I truly set apart? Am I truly being set apart, all right? As God has called me for a specific purpose, all right? He's putting these desires in my heart, but am I set apart? Am I still holding on to certain people, doing certain things, going to certain places that I'm not supposed to be going to, people I'm not supposed to be hanging with? Examine yourself, you know? Yeah, and if we were saying that this is a um, popular topic, just like Kingdom Spouse yeah, and all these other chosen topics, ones. chosen one, everybody want to be a chosen one. Everybody, you know, this and you know kingdom spouse everybody got a prophetic word yeah. don't get caught up in that stuff you know because i was telling my husband what man's description of being a chosen one is is different from God. god's description that's right so you know people walking around they taking this thing chosen one chosen one just to feel special you know about themselves and stuff like that but the thing is are you really living yes, how right. god wants you to live mm -hmm. do you have any desires of this world you know 
you know, that's what you have to examine yourself. Not to say that, you know, person can't grow, whatever, and God doesn't have a, um, he hasn't chose them, elected them, whatever. But I'm just saying, people take this topic and just like run with, run it. with it. I'm yeah. chosen, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. But you still willfully, yeah. now, you know, you fall, we, we all fall short. We mm-hmm. have struggles. We know, we understand that. But willfully out here sinning, willfully out here hanging with people, you know, you shouldn't be hanging with. Yeah. Willfully in relationships, you know, you shouldn't be in. Yes. Yeah, that's not being set apart. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that's not being yeah. set apart. It's not a chosen one. <laughs> so <laughs> we definitely have to examine ourselves. Yeah. You know, examine yeah. ourselves, examine our life. You know, I remember we're we're called to be holy, holy set apart. Part. You know, peculiar people. We're not yeah. called to fit in. Mm-hmm. So if you don't fit in with people, mm-hmm. listen, be be of good courage. All right, be encouraged. I remember you're not alone. Yeah, exactly, you're not alone. And you can't let that like uh, overtake you. Um, feeling like oh, I don't have this group of friends or whatever, you know, you have to be okay with it because God may be doing something in your life to, um, you know, have you isolated for a season or reason until the the right people come in. I know a lot of us, you know, have struggled with or struggle with, you know, I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody I can relate to, pray with, read the Bible, whatever. God will send those people sincerely into your life. Don't try to go out and make things happen because if you do and you try to get connected with the, um, the, wrong people whatever like that well you get connected to the wrong people that god didn't even call you to be connected with that can you know cause you to feel like you know uh now you mistrust Mm -hmm. now you know because god never called you to that group of people People, to that person you know so just wait on the lord don't be so anxious the bible says be anxious for nothing yes so don't be so anxious to go out here and make connections with people that god didn't call you to make connections with amen amen and amen so we pray that, you know, this message has blessed you and that you truly take this to heart because it's important. You know, it's always important for you to actually go to the next level uh, and fulfill the purpose that God wants you to fulfill. So definitely, you know, we pray that this message has blessed you. You know, thank you for actually tuning in and listening to this. Definitely, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like and also share this video with others as well so they can hear it, you know. and. Like always, you know, thank you all for your support as well. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen.